Welcome back to Crossbeats Production. So today's tutorial or a how-to guide is on how to use limiters and why you use limiters and also doing a quick master um, on any kind of project that you're working on. I guess it's not so much on the mastering side because there's other things involved in mastering other than just limiting and making your music loud. But um, for this sake of the tutorial, I just wanted to show how you can get a, a mix loud um, and how you can make it loud fast um, without having to do too much. So um, the reason why I'm using Machine is because I guess it's kind of not that well known um, for mixing in and um, I don't normally mix in it too often but you can definitely do it. Um, there's no doubt at all that you can definitely mix really well in, in Machine if you wanted to. Um, I just kind of tend to put everything that I do into Logic and that's where my creative space is. So. Anyway, um, I just wanted to quickly show everyone how I do a quick uh, limit on my tracks and I've got a drum track and it's kind of a little bit of a vibe, it's a stock kind of um, track that comes in machine out of one of the kits that I've got. Um, so I just figured, you know, why not, let's do a quick video. So let's get into it. So there's a couple of different things um, that you can do prior to limiting. Um, I don't want to get too much into that. but Compression is one of the keys to getting a good track um, for sure because it, it brings the loud things down and also the quiet things uh, louder. And that's kind of what limiting does as well, but limiting is similar to compressing, but it's a lot harsher on the mix in the sense of when you're limiting tracks, um, you're creating a threshold and um, basically you're creating a ceiling where um, that that can't be passed. So basically the ceiling you create, what a ceiling is, by the way, if you don't know what I'm talking about, a ceiling is a point where you cannot go past. Um, so just as you imagine inside a house, um, there's a ceiling inside the house and that's your the height of where you are inside that room. Um, if you imagine your mix being inside of a room, the ceiling is the top and your uh, you can't throw things past the ceiling uh, if you well you could if you want to break your ceiling but um, and that I guess in a sense that's what clipping is if you wanted to look at clipping but anyway back to why we're here so a limiter is basically works kind of like a compressor but a lot different so not a lot different actually wrong so back to that so the limiter that I'm using here is uh, a stock plugin that comes in machine and then the other limiter I'm using just to show other people how other limiters work is the one that uh, Isotope uh, Ozone 6. I've actually got five as well. They work kind of similar, but I just prefer to use Ozone 6 because it's the latest one there. Oh, actually, Ozone 7 now is. Um, so basically, let me play the track. Um, this other plugin that I've got, the Transient Master, in case you don't know what that is, um, the Transient Master is a... Uh, an attack and sustain adjustment. So basically when you increase the attack, you're getting more of a transient at the start of the actual um, hit. So the loudest part of that hit, so say for example a kick, um, the loudest part of that kick is being increased. So that's that first sign on this, you know, basically when you see a waveform, that first initial kick of um, the transient that's on that kick is increasing that basically. Sustain is for how long that is increased for. So usually uh, you would reduce your sustain and increase your attack if you're looking at a kick drum, but you can do anything you want really. There's no rules to it. Um, this Transient Master also has an input gain and it also has a limit on itself. So it's just like a limiter, but the input gain doesn't increase as much as a standard limiter like this one does or Ozone 6. Um, so I just wanted to show that just to give people an idea of how um, this actual mix had a transient master on it already um, and it was set up where it just wouldn't go over the peak of 0 dB. Um, so anyway, let's get to it. So I'll play this, um, it's a loop of um, 8 bars and I'll play it across and it'll be um, played for a bit and then I'll show you how to use the limiter there.
Okay, so if you can see in my mix here, this is the mixer that comes in with machine. So with the mix, as you can see, I've reduced these down to close to about minus 10. Um, I kind of like to go on minus 10 as a level where my entire mix goes to. As you can see here, it's peaked at about minus 6. I think before limiting, you probably should leave. There's no rule around it really, but if you want to have a mix that sounds, um, I guess, transparent and you want to have a lot of dynamic range, uh, you should have at least minus six maximum um, level there because you know you can you can go to minus three for sure and there's no stopping you from doing that but i think if you want to have more of a dynamic range in your beat uh, you definitely want to leave a bit of room for when you go to limit your your track um, so if that makes sense um, if you want me to elaborate further on another video i certainly can do that uh, but anyway let's start limiting with the standard limiter and see what we can get so this response time here that is actually how fast the limiter returns uh, back to its original state so if I'm putting it at one one millisecond so it takes one millisecond for it to go back so um, in essence when you're pulling this down as the threshold you're increasing the um, the loudness because you're reducing the dynamic range basically um, and then this is your ceiling right here so if you pulled that down to 10, that would go back to minus 10 right over here. And um, then you would be decreasing your dynamic range by pulling the threshold down. And your response time is here. So that's how fast it's going to respond to the things that are coming into it. So let's just limit this track and see what we can come up with. So the first thing I do when I limit a track is I'll bring my threshold down to where I want it to be. So I'll bring it down to say minus 10 because actually I'll bring it down to about minus 8. So that way when I go to limit it doesn't increase it doesn't increase the volume of the actual track before I bring the ceiling back up. So I find that limiting that way helps you understand or helps you hear especially the low end of your track so when you're uh, listening for your kick and if you have a bass line in your track you want to be listening to that the most because that's where your dynamic range will suffer the first part I find that it suffers the most um, so say I'll pull it down to about minus 9, minus 10 somewhere around there and then I'll just start pulling the threshold down so just listen to how this goes See, as you heard, when I pulled up the ceiling, it got louder. It did get a bit louder when I pulled down the threshold because it's just closing that amount of dynamic range that I have, but it definitely got louder when I pulled up this ceiling right to the top. Now, this ceiling is set to 0 0.03 as a standard. I think they've just set it that way because that's the, I guess, quote-unquote industry standard uh, for a ceiling. I don't think there's any such thing as industry standard, but um, point. 03 is kind of where people like to limit because it leaves a little bit of clearance uh, for when you go to put to CD or um, you know iTunes or whatever. Uh, I think iTunes have a pretty specific way that they like to have their tracks where you can't have them past a certain loudness. Um, but don't quote me on that because I'm not too sure with the iTunes side of things. But anyway, so I'm going to use this limiter and I'll just quickly show you pulling the dynamic, sorry, the threshold down a bit more just to show you how it can crush the drums. Now I'll just pull this back down so it doesn't go too loud, but I'll just pull it down to about minus 10, minus 12, see how we go.
So yeah, as you can hear, the drums are really suffering. They don't sound dynamic anymore. It sounds like they're being crushed, and that's exactly what's happening. So watch how I can make it sound loud but not crushed. Okay, so that's really pushing it um, and I brought this response time a little bit up so it was even more so pushing the fact that the drums were really uh, stressing that limiter and the threshold that I had set, it was really um, pretty much as much as you'd want to go. I don't know because there's no actual meter with numbers but by my guess it would probably be minusing about 4 dB of gain reduction. Um, so. Let's go to the Ozone 6 because that kind of, I don't have a meter on this to show you um, the actual, let me just double check actually. No, I do have the K meter. All right, let's just bring this open for a second. No, nope. all right, let's close that because I don't want to buy it. Let's close that for a second. Now, all right, Ozone 6, so we'll just turn this one off and we'll work with Ozone 6. Okay, so this one set the threshold down to zero, so we'll put it to one as a character, which is quite fast for a limiter. Um, IRC 1, 2, and 3. Now, basically, I don't want to get too much into this because that's not why I started this whole tutorial, but I can explain these later. But basically, they're just different styles of limiters that um, Ozone have created and I guess these are replicating kind of like the IRC one, which would be similar to the waves, um, the waves limiter that they produce for, I think, I can't even remember what it's called now, but there is a waves limiter. They've got three different main styles of limiters. Uh, their maximizer limiter works similar to these. I think that the IRC three is probably one of the best ones I've heard so far, which is the plug-in versions of limiters anyway for for you guys with hardware, there's probably way better ones out there, but I haven't tried those yet. So um, let's try this to see how this one works. Now again, I'll bring this down to, we'll go down to minus 10 just for the sake of it. And I'm gonna bring this threshold down as, um, as I increase the loudness of this and I'll leave true, true peak limiting off. So let's just listen to this. Okay, so one thing you can look for, actually there's two things here. So basically down here, there's gonna be an area down here where it shows you how much I'm reducing the uh, the limiting actual threshold versus minusing the uh, decibel level. And I try to go for about minus four to six maximum um, because if you start going down more than minus six, you're gonna crush everything and it won't sound natural at all. But um, up here, you can see it said minus 10 because that ceiling is set to minus 10, so we didn't go past minus 10. So watch what happens when I bring the ceiling up. Okay, so basically, that's showing you that I'm reducing about the same amount um, and it's up to about minus 0 0.03, uh, sorry, 0 0.3. Um, and that's the loudest part of that track. So that's the peak volume at the ceiling, which is set. Um, if you just change through, like when you're doing a mix, if you just change through these three options here, if you do have Ozone 6, a lot of, 
A lot of people have it. May you may not, and you don't have to have it either. Because Logic, if you're using Logic, it has a really really good limiter that I found, the standard one that's in there. Um, and if um, if you've just recently had that update, they've they've done a few visual things to it that make it a bit easier to use. Which I might actually show you how to use that in another video. Um, so basically, let me th flick through these, and I'll just show you how different they sound. Just uh, turn your volume down if uh, you haven't already done that. Now, if you've trained your ear to listen to the differences between those limiters, you'll know what I'm talking about. But I find that IRC2 and IRC3 have really... Actually, all three of them sound different to each other. Um, and the tube limiter sounds quite natural. Um, when you're listening to the peaks of the transient, it doesn't sound like they're being cut off like in other limiters. Uh, and the way I guess that handles things is a little bit more natural or natural sounding I should say um, and the character that you have set here so if you're going to increase the time that it takes for the limiter to, res to res uh, return to re standard resting response um, it, it will affect the character of your track as well so I'll just show you how that works let me just set it back down to uh, zero, 1.0 Sorry about the uh, clipping there. I'll just move it up and I'll show you. Just turn your volume down if uh, it's too loud. So, if you could hear the differences that I can hear right now, it's quite quite subtle, but there is definitely differences between the two and the character and the, the way that the transients are being affected. See, if you can see where it says trans, transparent, um, I felt, especially at about 6 and with the IRC2 or IRC1 even, you could just hear a more openness to the mix. Uh, I don't know how other to explain it than that, but it's definitely got a clarity and an openness that um, when I had it set to a faster response when this was down at one, uh, it didn't have that sound. Um, and also this limiter has other features such as transient emphasis, emphasis um, and stereo link, which is basically just linking your left and your right channel uh, together, which um, has its uh, ability to make your mix sound more cohesive, um, but you may not want that entirely on every mix. So, you know, when you're choosing how to use your limiter uh, and what you're using it for has a lot to do with uh, how you want to actually use it. So, um, as again, I'd always recommend pulling your ceiling down first. I know on the Waves plugins, you can actually pull them both down at the same time. Um, I'd have to see if you can do this on this, but um, I know you can definitely do it with the Waves ones. So, basically, that is pretty much it. Um, if there's any questions that you have about how limiters work or how I master my mixes, uh, definitely hit me up in the comments. But otherwise, um, thanks for watching and peace.